Welcome to the Mosomic Memes Microphone Guide. In this episode and the next one, we'll talk about sound and acoustics. In order to understand microphones, one also has to understand sound, the phenomenon that the microphones are supposed to capture. To start getting a grip on sound, we'll talk about what sound is, sound sources, and we'll also go through sound frequencies. In episode 2, we'll continue covering sound and acoustics. We'll discuss sound propagation, sound pressure level, Helmholtz resonance, and also the basic principle of a capacitive microphone. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. Hi, I'm Mikko Suvanto from Mosomic. The first question to ask in this episode is, what is sound? Well, the scientific answer is that sound is pressure and particle velocity oscillations in air. The oscillations interact with compliant solid objects. This enables us to build devices that can detect sound, microphones. Normally, sounds contain multiple frequencies, not just one. As an example, the illustration here shows a resulting signal waveform when two sign signals with different frequencies are combined. As you can see, the waveform of the combination is very different from the original signals. The more frequencies there are, the more complicated the signal is and looks. The frequency of the sound wave determines the pitch we hear. Low frequencies mean low pitch and high frequencies mean high pitch. The frequencies included in the sound and their relative strengths determine the perceived tone quality, timbre. If we simplify things a little, we can say that for a microphone, sound is basically air pressure oscillation frequencies and amplitudes for each one of those frequencies. The job of the microphone is to detect the frequencies in the captured sound and to detect the amplitudes for each frequency. The microphone must also convert the detected sound into an output signal that is an accurate representation of the captured sound. The audio frequency range is the range of frequencies that humans can hear. It ranges from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. However, it should be noted that this range is typically audible only to young people with good hearing. As people get older, they tend to lose some of the higher frequencies for example, from 15 kHz up. 1 kHz, even though it's not in the middle of 20 Hz and 20 kHz, is often considered the middle of the audio band. 1 kHz is often used for testing audio parameters, such as sensitivity. This is a 1 kHz signal. The frequencies above 20 kHz are above the human hearing range, and they're called ultrasound. Sound up to tens of kilohertz can be received by microphones and used for certain applications, such as echolocation, like bats do, and transmitting inaudible messages. The frequencies below 20 Hz are below the human hearing range and they are called infrasound. Infrasound is typically not used in consumer electronics applications. Some key factors that determine the importances of different frequencies are, for example, the source, the recipient, and what the sound is used for, and sound reproduction equipment. First of all, the nature and characteristics of sound depend on the source. Different sources transmit different frequencies, and this, naturally, affects which frequencies are important and which ones are not. Basically, if the source doesn't transmit a frequency, we don't need to capture it. Of course, most dividers are meant to capture a wide variety of sources, so versatility is needed. A sound source can be, for example, the vocal cords of a person, a speaker in a home media system or in a digital assistant, the engine, exhaust and wheels of a vehicle, air flowing in HVAC ducts. HVAC, of course, stands for heating, ventilation and air conditioning, wind or a musical instrument. We'll go into a lot more detail about sound sources and frequencies in a minute. The importances of different frequencies depend also on the application and what the sound will be used for. 
Different intended recipients may prefer different sound characteristics. The requirements for voice communication between people are different from the requirements for recording music, which again are different from the requirements for speech recognition. For example, people like natural sounding speech, where speech recognition algorithms only look for the key phonetic pieces of information that determine which letter or word was spoken, and would prefer to discard any other information. Also, the capabilities of the playback equipment play a role. Sometimes a too high sound quality can even be a problem if, for example, the sound signal contains something the signal chain or reproduction equipment can't handle. I'll talk more about this in a minute. The audio band can be divided into regions, as you can see in this illustration. The definitions of these bands are not standardized, so the names and frequency numbers may vary depending on who you ask. Starting from the bottom, the sub-bass frequencies from 20 to 60 Hz give you thump and rumble. Sub-bass frequencies are more felt than heard. The bass range is from 60 to 250 Hz. The bass and sub-bass frequencies are challenging to reproduce. Achieving a good bass response often leads to increased size and or cost of the system and the speakers. The smaller the devices, the more difficult it is to make the bass frequencies sound good. That's why audio produced by the speakers in mobile devices is typically weak as compared to bigger systems. However, the reproduction of low frequencies is easier in a small confined space, such as the ear canal. Therefore, headphones can achieve a good bass response also without making the system big. Capturing low frequencies is a lot easier than reproducing them. The low frequency capabilities of a microphone depend on its type and design. They set the low frequency roll-off frequency, below which the microphone starts losing its sensitivity. Also, the acoustical and mechanical implementation of the microphone into the device it's in affect low frequency capturing. We'll talk more about these in upcoming episodes about microphone structure and implementation. Many types of music contain low frequency instruments, so it's important to capture those frequencies so that the captured music will sound like the producer and the performer intended it to sound. The key bass frequencies in modern music are typically between 90 Hz and 200 Hz. For example, the kick drum, bass guitar, piano and pipe organ produce low frequencies. Artificial bass instruments in modern electronic music can produce very low sub-bass frequencies that are a key ingredient of that style of music. The sub-bass and bass frequencies are not important for speech communication. Human voice doesn't include significant information at these frequencies. Sometimes it's not desirable to capture all the low frequencies that reach the microphone. If the signal you want to capture doesn't include low frequencies, it's a good idea to avoid them. Discarding the lowest frequencies helps avoid rumble and other low frequency disturbances. Undesired frequencies may have to be filtered out with an acoustical or electrical overpass filter. For example, many recording systems include a filter, often engaged with a dedicated button, specifically designed for easily filtering out low frequencies. For example, below 75 Hz like we see in the mixer here. In some cases, for example if low frequencies are wanted in the signal but the sound is too muddy, the use of slight equalization instead of filtering may be more appropriate. If the playback medium is not capable of handling the signal, the result may be distortion or other problems. For example, the speakers in mobile devices may be too small to reproduce low frequencies. Also in this case, removing the lowest frequencies is likely beneficial. The low mid-range frequencies range from 250 Hz to 500 Hz. The low mid-range is essential for speech and music. It contains a lot of the energy of voices and melodic instruments. Mid-range is from 500 Hz to 2 kHz and high mid-range from 2 kHz to 6 kHz. The frequencies from about 300 Hz to 3.5 kHz is the band that contains most information contained in human speech. The band ranging from mid-range to high mid-range, from 1.2 kHz to 3.5 kHz, is an important band for speech 
because the frequencies for both vowels and consonants lie within that range. The traditional telephony band is cut off at 3.5 kHz. It's still enough for voice identification, so people can distinguish who's talking. Human hearing is very sensitive at the mid-range and high mid-range frequencies. Any problems with frequency balance can significantly change the way voices and instruments sound. If this range is, or parts of this range are, emphasized too much, the result may be horn-like or teeny sound quality. The band from 4 kHz to 6 kHz is often called the presence range. These frequencies give presence for both speech and music. For music, boosting this range too much can make the sound irritating and harsh. The high frequencies, from 6 kHz to 20 kHz, contain mostly harmonic frequencies of other, lower frequencies. This range adds brilliance, sparkle and air into sound. The frequencies ranging from the top of the high mid-range, from about 5 kHz up to 10 kHz, are important for music. They add life and brightness to the sound. These frequencies contain fairly little speech information, only sibilance, for example, the beginnings of words like ship, chip and zip. Too much boost at the high mid-range and high frequencies may cause problems with sibilance, making the S sounds too pronounced. On the other hand, too little sibilance reduces the intelligibility of the speech, so a good frequency balance between 4 kHz and 8 kHz is important. The frequencies above 10 kHz contribute very little to speech. Any boosting of these frequencies can easily lead to unwanted hiss noise. The boost can be caused by, for example, an acoustic resonance. In music, cymbals, violin and some woodwind instruments produce sound above 10 kHz. Traditional TV and FM radio broadcasts are often limited to 15 kHz. The resulting sound quality is good enough for most people. The frequencies above 10 kHz can be challenging to capture with microphones built into devices. The acoustic porting and sound channels in the device mechanics can easily cause resonances. We'll talk more about resonance and implementation in another episode. The audio frequencies can also be divided into bands based on what the sound is used for and the requirements for sound quality. Here are some examples of those bands. As I mentioned earlier, 1 kHz is a test signal commonly used in various kinds of audio testing. As I also mentioned, the band from 300 Hz to 3.5 kHz is the key band for voice communication. It's the most important band for speech intelligibility. Expanding the band to be from 200 Hz up to 8 kHz enables capturing a pretty natural sounding human voice. Sound processing algorithms typically operate somewhere between 100 Hz and 8 kHz. Therefore, it's important that the sound signal quality in this band is high and suitable for the algorithm. For most people, the band from 50 Hz to 15 kHz enables a high audio quality level. Like I mentioned, radio and TV are typically limited to below 15 kHz. For more demanding listeners, audiophiles, the whole 20 Hz to 20 kHz bandwidth, or even a little bit more, especially at the high end of the frequency spectrum, is needed. Okay, that's it for this episode. In this one we talked about what sound is, sound sources and sound frequencies. If you'd like to learn more about sound and acoustics re related to MEMS microphones, check out episode 2 where we'll continue on this subject. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you liked what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. 
For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation.